I'm Ryan, the co-founder of Portrait, and Portrait is a no-code decentralized website builder. Um, today I'll be talking about how we use GPT to build decentralized websites with a single click. Um, so that's a short introduction on my side, co-founder of Portrait. I'll talk a bit about what Portrait is, what we're aiming to solve, and then, and then we'll dive into a demo. So we'll dive in the, into a demo how we can actually generate a decentralized website uh, in a single click, with a single click. Everything's all right? Okay, yeah. Um, and what, what kind of implications that has. Um, so after that, after the demo, we'll, we'll finish with a food for thought uh, where we kind of consider the ethical implications of, of AI. Um, so first off, portrait, why portrait? Um, Web3 is kind of characterized by being in control of your identity. It's kind of ownership over data, those type of things. And when we look in, we, when we're looking at Web3 today, we can ask ourselves, are we truly able to be in control of our data? So to give a short example, if you'd like to, to write in Web3, uh, in Web2, you'll go to Medium or use WordPress for whatever, for whatever that means. But in Web3, you can use solutions such as Mirror or Paragraph or Sigil, which is an alternative to, to Mirror, right? There are many solutions out there to write uh, to write your blogs. And if you'd like to release an NFT collection, there are, there are 135 solutions to actually do that. So for every single depth, for every single use case, there are a lot of solutions out there. But if you'd like to kind of find the conjunction between two things or even more things, that's where things really start to, to get more complicated. Because what if you'd like to write and release an NFT or kind of you kind of publish videos and you'd like to blog about something? So let's say Joe, Joe who owns Joe.eth, um, kind of would like to express himself in various different ways. Uh, so he uses an array of different dApps to actually do that. But Joe.eth is more than a, than a textual representation of his identity. It's also, there's also the ability to create a visual representation and that's able to be done through the content hash which you actually can set in the ENS domain manager, and you can actually map your ENS domain to specific content located on IPFS. On top of that, there are browsers out there, such as Brave and Oprah, that natively support resolving ENS domains. So we kind of build the logic to build decentralized websites, but the ability, the ability to, so, yeah, just to round it up, as of now, you can only map one content hash, or you can, you can map one content hash to your ENS domain. So that would mean that Joe can map only one way of expressing himself to his domain name. And what Joe likes to do is map everything to his ENS domain, right? And in order to do that today, Joe has to be part of the subset of Web3 creators that are actually technical. And then he'd have to design and code his own website and publish that either through Fleek or Third Web and then map the content hash to his ENS domain. Now, I think everyone in this room is quite technical and for everyone is in this room, that would be an easy job. But we are part of the subset of the more technical individuals in the space. So for the entire set, there's no solution out there. And that's what we're building. So we're building a no-code decentralized website builder that allows anyone to truly express themselves through Web3. As you can see on the left hand side, there's an example of what we've built. Um, you control, tr truly control your own website from A to Z. And this is just a, a quick visual of what we're building. Um, so when you're building a solution for Web3 or for the new internet, so to speak, you kind of have to think about, are we just bu building X for blockchain? Are we building Uber for blockchain? Are we doing Airbnb for Web3? Because if you're doing that, you should really stop doing that and kind of try to find a new purpose in life. But if you're building a solution for Web3, you should start from the beginning and wonder what does Web3 actually bring that we can build a better version of, let's say, a Webflow. And Portrait is not Webflow. 
um, portrait is fundamentally different than Webflow. And I will tell you, I'll showcase that in a bit because Web2 is obviously siloed and Web3 is open. And we took some time to think about that and we, we realized your Ethereum address will be mapped to a website, to a visual representation. But there's a lot of data out there which is mapped to your Ethereum address. Think about event att attendances through POAPs. Think about linking your Ethereum address to your Farcaster account. Such things do have implications and we'll dive uh, a bit deeper into that. But for us as the, the founders of Portrait, when we decided to build a product, we thought about how can we create a better user experience. So there are kind of two sides to it. From one side, it's very easy to build a decentralized website. On the other side, there will be some implications. All right, so now I'll dive into a demo of what we're actually doing. And we can kick, kick this off with trying to find a certain individual on Etherscan or whatsoever and actually find his address and, to, and we can actually generate a portrait for that person. So let's take Vitalik, kind of looking up his address. We can put that into, so we're actually, this is actually live right now, so our users have access to this, but I'll run a local demo. And it truly is with a single click. Um, so, well, these are two clicks actually, but we do have to add a disclaimer that you're actually running better software and who knows what uh, GPT will spit out right. Um, we're also kind of adding tags to create recommendations, but that, that has nothing to do with Portrait AI. Uh, so when we think about Vitalik, what kind of tags would you select? Anyone in the crowd? Sorry? It's hard to see. Is this better? I think we can kind of go for technologist. technologist. That would be a good one. Game changer, possibly. Yeah. Pro Problem solver. All right. I think software engineer would be probably <laughs> right fit as well. All right, so now we're, we're generating the portrait. We'll just make sure that. And you'll actually have kind of this, you'll actually see this kind of monologue with Portrait AI, and he kind of will introduce himself as Portrait AI, the navigator of the cyber realm. And so Vitalik has quite some data mapped to his Ethereum address. So it might take a minute. So your portrait is ready. And that was quite interesting because um, we're not in control of what GPT spits out. So every time we generate a new portrait, even for Vitalik, new information will kind of emerge. So today we saw that um, he was in favor of removing, or, or in favor of daylight savings, right? And Oh, abolishing, so it was abolishing daylight savings. I mean, that's pretty personal, kind of relevant information there. And all we did was just kind of fetch data mapped to his Ethereum address. Um, so we'll actually visit the portrait that's been generated as well. Um, I know that you might be able to see <laughs> kind of his face here. Um, but we can spit out a personal website. Um, here we'll see some NFTs, but these are probably airdrop to him. And then we'll also see a bi biography about him. And we're even adding his personal links. So that's one example. We'll, we'll actually dive into another example right away. And with that example, I will also dive a bit more into kind of the implications of of AI and Web3 together. So let's try this one again. We can actually stay right here. And let's take Brian Armstrong, for example. So Brian, Brian, Brian Armstrong Ethereum address. I'm not, I, I'm not even aware of what his Ethereum address is. I'm just simply Googling it. I'll click the first link that pops up. 
and I'll copy his Ethereum address. I'm not even sure whether this is his Ethereum address or not. Let's paste that in. And we'll do the same thing again. Starting from zero, use Portrait AI. And for Brian, we can kind of select similar tags, but let's take a few new ones. We can, we can take technologists as well. Let's take kind of political advocate because of his, yeah, okay, let's take political advocate as well, and progressive thinker. Um, now we're generating a personal portrait for, for Brian, hopefully, if that's his actual address. Long and behold, we know that the Ethereum address is mapped to Brian Armstrong. Not only that, so we actually know that he, <laughs> from a prototype to a public company, and that's all we know by just fetching data from his Ethereum address. And I actually tried his specific address a few times, and sometimes the AI which I, I would actually, actually spit out that he went to a certain event and that he's actually the CEO of, of Coinbase. And I'd like, I'd like to talk more about Attendant, like attendance at events through ProApps, for example, um, because let's head back into the keynote. And that's because, actually, let's take a step back. So when we go back to Etherscan, is there something someone notices about his address? <clears throat> There are quite some funds there, right? And we now, we now know that this is the address of Brian Armstrong. Just putting that out there. And Brian knows that he is a notable individual. And Brian knows that he has to take security measures. Because of that, he can actually be a bit more confident in public, publicly showing his funds and his ETH balance. But kind of do you or does anyone else that has these funds and uses Farcaster and uses POAP to attend events, for example, does that individual take the right security measures? Kind of, we can kind of look at this from when you're at holiday, don't take photos and publish them on social media because uh, burglars can break into your house and kind of pee on your couch. Um, and that was something like we'd say, okay, boomer, kind of that level of information, like we know and we're not doing that. Um, but we can actually, with Web3 and with AI and GPT, we can actually take that a bit a step further where these photos, these holiday photos, are kind of in the moment where a burglar or anyone, a malicious, a bad actor, a malicious person actually should find that photo in the first place, and then know that, hey, that person is away, and I can kind of pee on his couch. But with the data mapped to your Ethereum address, or data uh, like, um, like event attendances through POAPs, for example, which is mapped to your Ethereum address, and GPT, can we actually predict whether an individual will attend a certain event? And that's a step further because that's something we're, we can actually well predict in the future. Um, so that, here's the food for thought, and here's what I'd like to end my presentation with, is that on one side, we can build great products from the user experience, and on the other side, we can ask, is it in the best interest of the community that most personal data is available at any given time to anyone, combined with the fact that you can run any type of computation on top of the data, given that AI is becoming more accessible by the day. 
Thank you very much. Uh, so is it using like ChatGPT under the hood? Yeah, a bit of GPT 3.5 and 4. OK. Is, is there a way to maybe use something like Bloom, like something open source instead? Potentially. Have you tried that? So we kind of um, looked at what can we build in a very short time frame. It's actually it's, it's in beta also, and the uh, OpenAI kind of API is kind of very accessible today. But I think that's a great question as well from an ethical perspective. Um, Sam uh, is also the founder of WorldCoin. Um, enough said, probably. Um, so we're also sharing all of this data with OpenAI itself as an organization. And we should also look at the ethical implications of that. Yep, yeah. For sure, yeah. So how do you see AI technologies involving in the next few years? And what are the new applications and use cases do you envision? Oh, that's a very general question. Um, I don't think I can truly answer that because the developments we've seen over the last year is something I wouldn't have expected myself. I also have to add on top of that that I'm not an expert in AI and I haven't followed the space from the beginning. So um, I'd like to see, I'm, so personally, last, just last week, Elon registered x.ai and I think that's a very interesting emerging thing, everything surrounding Elon is um, interesting to say the least, whether that's good or bad, uh, but it always has kind of uh, a quick, there's, there's always like this uh, attention, there's always a lot of attention mapped to whatever he does. So I think that's an interesting development. Yeah. 